Today we're installing a 36 inch A arm kit on the 2018 Polaris Arm K155. The reason for doing so is that the stock lower A arm on the left hand side was bent at the end of last season. So it was time to either replace just that lower A arm on the left side or get a whole new kit. We decided for a whole new kit because they are relatively inexpensive and it should provide a completely different ride. Some of the tools required to do this work, um, obviously you want some socket sets, any sort of wrenches that you have, um, channel locks is preferable, as well as some sort of circlip pliers. There are at least six circlips that you have to deal with on this project, so circlip pliers are ideal. And as mentioned before, we're installing the 36 inch kit. It is from Zebros Racing, the Polaris Axis 36 inch front end kit. This comes in black, they are chromoly. Uh, there is an option to get billet upper A arms for another 150 or 200 bucks, but we just opted for the chromoly upper A arms. In this video, we're going to be pressing in ball joints. Obviously pressing the ball joints out of the stock A-arm, so what we're going to cover in this video is pretty much applicable to any A-arm install or removal on not just Polaris sleds, but um, any other manufacturer. Another tool you're going to need is a hydraulic press of some sort. This is a cheap little one from Walmart, it's like $12. So if you don't think you can do this yourself, you totally can. Go to Walmart, get one of these cheap jacks, or go on Craigslist and find a cheap jack. And then you're going to need a, a welded frame of some sort, where you can uh, have the press and uh, be able to press these joints in and out of the A-arms. Alright, let's get started. Alright, first project is to handle uh, the removal of the shocks, which I'm doing right now. It's just two simple bolts, one at the bottom of the shock, one at the top of the shock. And at the top of the shock, you're gonna have this removable grommet, which will allow you to pass the bolt out. All right, so we're removing all this sway bar hardware. Here it is. Um, the new Ars FX Zebros uh, lower A-arms do have a tab like these OEM lower A-arms do. So you can install these sway bars on the new A-arms. Um, I'm just not sure how necessary they are. I see a lot of other mod sleds with the uh, aftermarket front ends that have the sway bars completely removed. So we're gonna do the same thing if we feel the need to put them back on, we could totally put these stock sway bars right back onto the new uh, lower A-arms. And I like putting all the nuts and bolts right back where they uh, came off. That way if I ever need to go back to OEM, it's pretty easy. I'm not curious about where bolts go. And there is a sway bar, fully removed. So this very front bolt on the bottom A arm right here passes through to the other side. So in order to move one A arm, you're gonna have to remove this bolt and slide it out the other end. So what I like to do after you have removed the A-arms from the sled is to just grab your new A-arm 
um, with whichever one you want to start with. We're going to start with this damage one. And I like to set the two A arms side by side, side in the same orientation. Um, I know that this is the lower left. I put a sticker, which I recommend doing on all your your uh, the A arms that you remove, just telling you where it belongs on the sled. Um, this is the front, so this faces the nose of the sled. And I'm going to orient the new one in the same direction. The sticker goes towards the nose of the sled, and that way, when I remove this hardware. Um, from the old A arm, I know exactly where it goes in the new one. And it's important because they are not the same. This one is a little bit beefier and it's also at a slight angle. So that has to go into this front um, A arm. If you do something wrong, you'll know when you try to install it on the sled. What we do is we're going to remove these circlips from the inside of each of these, sliding out the hardware, and then we're going to reuse these uh, beige bushings that are in here and those are going to slide into the new A arms and we're going to do that right now. All right, there we go. I'm going to take the washer and all this hardware off and lay it where it belongs on right here. I'm going to repeat the process on this. And if you've tweaked that circlip at all, what I like to do is just throw my pliers in there and kind of set it back where it belongs. All right, now it's time to get these bushings out of the old A-arm. I'm using a 14 millimeter socket and I'm gonna work on a hard surface that doesn't move. I'm going to place that right in here. And I'm going to give it a few love taps. No need to be aggressive with this. Rubber mallet works great. And there's your bushing. It'll come right out. The way it goes back in is the washer end goes in from the outside. We'll repeat the process on this side. Those are our two bushings, and that's how they should look. That's the way it's oriented. This one goes in like this. Circlips are on the inside of the A-arms. Make sure that is fully seated. And one way I like to check is hold the circlip in place and try to rotate. There we go. Now it's seated. The circlip won't move or it can spin freely in that groove. So here's a little close up of the bulkhead mount and the circlip. The circlip is going to seat in this little groove here. If it's not fully seated, this will come off while you're riding and potentially cause an issue. So yeah, I just like to make sure it's fully seated in that groove after I have uh, put installed it. So I install all the bushings and these bulkhead mounts first. Get those all done. They're all in the right orientation on each particular um, A-arm. And then now it's time to start pressing joints out and pressing them into the new A-arms. So there's two ways to buy this kit from most manufacturers that make aftermarket A-arms. Um, one way is the way we bought it without ball joints. The other way is to buy it with the ball joints already installed. If you buy it like we did without ball joints in your new A-arms, that means you have to press the old ball joints out of the OEM uh, A-arms and press them into the new ones. To do so, I just find the two A-arms that are the exact same ones. This is the lower left old one. This is the lower left new one. What you're going to do is remove another circlip here. We're also going to pop the uh, circlips out of the top of the uh, upper A arm as well. 
All right, here we're at the ghetto press. Uh, let me explain what we have going on. This We're pressing this ball joint out of this upper A arm. We're pressing it out in this direction. So it just it's nice having a selection of sockets to use to press, depending on what kind of press you have. Some people have fancier setups than this. Um, but essentially we're gonna press this ball joint out. So if you look from the top, we're trying to press that ball joint out so what I've done is just uh, put a little piece of box section steel around the part that we're trying to press out just so that uh, ball joint has a place to go when we start pressing. And I'm going to press it a little bit and you'll see it start to move. And now it's been pressed out. So there's your ball joint. So sometimes it's going to take a little jerry-rigging with uh, different parts. It's good to have some pieces of box section. Plate steel is nice. And then obviously a bunch of different size sockets. Now when we press this ball joint back into the new A-arm, what I'll do is I'll find a socket that'll bear on this outer perimeter. I don't want it to bear on the actual ball any more than I have to. All right, so we're pressing in the uh, ball joint on the upper A-arm. We chose a 19 mil socket, and you can see it fits around the perimeter of that ball joint nicely. All right, we got all of our circlips in, ball joints have been pressed in. Now it's time to start putting stuff back on the sled. All right, so Zebros also includes a t cut template. It's included in the instructions. What I did was cut it out. And now I have this little template and um, essentially you're gonna have to remove a little piece of material from the stock spindles in order for the bars to fully turn left and right. If you don't do this, you will know it because your bars won't really move enough. So you cut this out, you set it in uh, this position here I flush it out with the edge of the spindle and I just mark with a sharpie the area that needs to be removed. And now we're going to take this to a grinder and get that uh, out of there. Alright, last step, we got the A-arms installed. Um, the spindles have been modified so they can have uh, full clearance and turning. Um, now since we've uh, reduced our stance from 39 to 36, the kit does include new tie rods. So we're going to have to remove the existing tie rods and put these aftermarket tie rods on. Um, some tie rods will have left hand thread and others will have right hand thread. Uh, the way I find out is I literally just look at the thread and just visualize uh, when I'm spinning left, is that not going to move off or on? In this case, it's a normal uh, left-hand thread, so we're going to go lefty-loosey, break that off, and take this ball end out. This is going to go on our new tie rod. Now you're going to have to break the other end. I have an open-ended wrench down there. This is a 11 sixteenths, and you're going to put this on the opposite end. It's the same exact ball joint fitting. Uh, this is a lock nut on the inside as well. What you're gonna do is get this wrench over that lock nut inside, and now it's the opposite direction. We're going righty-loosey instead of lefty-loosey. So this end was a left-hand thread, tr traditional. Inside is a right-hand thread. I'm gonna take the new one, insert it in, and I'm spinning left to tighten. All right, we're threaded on. All right, guys, we're on the left side of the sled, and I highly recommend removing this rubber boot that houses the uh, tie rod. All it is is a couple push darts and uh, a couple Torx uh, screws that are going in here. And once you do that, you're going to have much better access to what I'm talking about. Here's your steering column here. 
this is the opposite end of your tie rod inside your chassis. Again, another lock nut and a ball fitting. This stays intact. We're just unthreading the old OEM tie rod from this lock nut and threading the new one on. Take this and I'm going to spin the tie rod to the left to tighten it on. And I'm only going to go uh, a few turns in just so it's biting fully on thread. And then I'm going to attach it back onto the spindle. Once I attach this on the spindle, then it's time to adjust the steering. When I spin the, uh, the tie rod in any direction, it's going to start to adjust the, the, uh, the ski. So now's the time where I'm just going to slowly adjust from side to side. Figure out the sweet spot. I recommend taking the sled off your lift um, and putting it on the ground, on the snow. Um, that way you're, it, the front end is under load or under proper load. Stand on the sled with the bars, wiggle them back and forth, look down the nose of the sled, and you're just gonna have to pretty much eyeball and figure out it, are the skis pointing left or are they pointing right? Once you get them so they're parallel with the sled and with the handlebars, then you can slowly adjust the, the pitch, whether they're, they're towed in or towed out. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We got a lot more videos coming. I just went skiing. It just snowed four and a half feet this week. It's the first week in November 2018 in Colorado. We're super excited to get sledding this year. Thanks for watching.